What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart for another Copart walk around. Let's jump into this video and see what we find. So I stumbled upon this as I was walking around the aisles here and I thought, man, it's been a long time since I've seen a Dodge Nitro. Actually, it hasn't been that long my dad owns one, but I owned one many, many years ago when I lived in Paris, Illinois. I had a Nitro, it had 20 inch chrome wheels. In fact, it looked exactly like this and I absolutely loved that thing. So when I saw this one sitting here, I was like, I kind of low key want it. <laughs> I do, I miss it. It's been a long time. It's a Nitro RT. It's got the 4.0. I had this exact one, except mine was black, with the same chrome wheels and everything, man. I absolutely loved this thing. And keeping it clean, that was a different story, but white might be a little easier. Of course, it's got the leather interior. It's showing its age. This definitely is uh, a little bit older today than it was when I lived in Paris, Illinois, probably 10 to 12 years ago. Regardless though, I always thought the body styling on this was just really, really cool, really beefy and robust. Sorry for all the noise. It's, you know, it's, it's Copart. They're not gonna stop doing their business because I'm here. Now this is a pedal car. Does it have power? It, oh my goodness, it does, that never happens. That never happens. This is a pedal car, and I've told you guys what pedal is before, but maybe you're new and you don't know what pedal is. Well, I got confused a long time ago, and I thought pedal is a car place that buys junk cars, scrap cars, and while that is true, it's also not true. I actually had some of the team from pedal contact me. They actually reached out to me, very friendly people, and they wanted to explain exactly what they were because I don't think they want their name associated with like junk cars. Yes, they buy junk cars, they buy scrap cars. They also buy perfectly good running and driving cars that people don't want to deal with selling. And then they send them to auction and sell them and see what they can get out of them. And hopefully they make a profit on them because if not, well, it wouldn't be a very good business now, would it? So it's a mixed bag when you buy a pedal car. You really don't know what you're getting. You could just get something that somebody just didn't want to mess with trying to sell to the public. They don't want to deal with it and they sent it to pedal. And by the way, you can sell your vehicle to pedal too. If you don't feel like dealing with Facebook marketplace or any of the other places, you can just I think you just send them an email or you go to their website. It's not sponsored at all. I've never actually sold them anything, but I know people that have. They said it was a seamless experience. You tell them what you've got, they give you an offer. If you accept it, they come get the car, they give you a check. It's that simple. So it doesn't mean that it's broken or damaged, but I'm gonna say it is a mixed bag. Some of them I've gotten have been excellent, ready to go running driving cars. Some of them have been total basket cases. So you just don't know what you're getting, man. But that's part of the fun, right? It's the adventure. It's the thrill of the hunt, so to speak. Ah, oh. okay. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. We can pop the hood and put a jump on it. No big deal if I can remember where the hood release is. You know, the leather seat's torn just a little bit. No big deal. The rest of the interior actually looks pretty good with the exception of the headliner. I, I don't know what happened to the headliner, but it's pretty bad, especially right here. That looks like somebody's soda exploded. I hope that's what that is and not something else. <laughs> Again, it's one of those things you just, you never know. Okay, let's pop the hood. We'll give this thing a jump start real quick because I'm genuinely interested in a Dodge Nitro just because I haven't had one in so, so long. And I'll bet you can get this thing relatively cheap. It actually looks really good under here, guys. It's dirty, but I don't see any oil or grease residue, anything like that. This thing, I think, is a win. We got the booster pack doing what it does. Now let's see if the engine's gonna do what it's supposed to do. Oh. Well, no. <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. Uh uh. That's a, that's a nope on this one. Like I said, mixed bag, you never know what you're going to get. Um, I don't know. Do I feel like changing an engine in a four wheel drive? 
Um, probably not. Looking at it though, I mean, it doesn't look like it's super complicated. Really, it doesn't. This doesn't look like it's a really hard engine to change, except for the cowling. It's kind of up there. You get all this stuff out of the way. You got a lot of room to disconnect your engine from the transmission, the torque converter, and pull it forward. You might, there might be enough room to pull this out from under the hood. I don't know. I don't know. You may have to take this front end off to get to it. Oh, there's a clue as to what might have happened. This looks like a thermostat gasket just sitting under the hood. So, wouldn't be surprised if this thing overheated severely and, you know, she got hot spun a rod bearing. It is what it is. Moving on. Next, we got a Jeep Gladiator that uh, looks like something isn't quite right. with. If you see it, go ahead and drop a comment below and I'll just continue walking around this thing. It looks relatively new. I believe this is a 2022. It's a 23. It's even newer than that. 23 Jeep Gladiator. I don't know, you guys see anything wrong with it or uh, is it just my imagination? Well, we're gonna start by looking back here, right? Let's move this out of the way. Oh, okay, well, that's a clue. That's, yeah, that's definitely a clue. Okay, we got uh, several wheels and tires back here. And uh, there's a spare on the back. Now, this is interesting, all right? Because if you look at the back wheel, it actually looks pretty normal to me. It doesn't look like anything is out of whack. That doesn't mean it's not. It just doesn't look like it. But this is the kind of the fun part here, right? If you take a look at this wheel, you can probably tell that uh, <laughs> it ain't where it's supposed to be. Now, somebody hit something real good with this front end and I'm sure there is tons of damage to the undercarriage suspension possibly maybe even some frame damage from this which is why it's sitting here but if you just look at it right you're not paying attention you might not notice that this wheel is crammed back into the a pillar you could you could miss that and because the wheel isn't damaged it's shiny it's a new wheel you might miss that and if you do you could end up paying way more than what you probably would want to pay for something like this. There's some of your damage down there. Uh, I can't see everything, but it looks like they put an X on the spindle. That could be from the factory, I don't know. I got a feeling there's a lot of damage going on down there. Um, <laughs> I don't know what they hit, but they hit something really hard. It could be as simple as putting some new suspension components back on and driving this thing right down the road again. But again, what I find interesting is they put the spare on the back and they put a new wheel on the front, almost like, almost to make you take your attention away from the front and focus it on the back. Because you see the spare tire back there and you're thinking, ah, something must have happened back there. But no, no, no. No, it happened up here. This thing probably runs. I would imagine it's a run and drive, although it doesn't say. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Let's take a look. Uh, you know what would be great is if this was an eco diesel. I've always wanted one of these in an eco diesel. Don't ask me why. I, I don't know, but I just do. Come on. Where is the... I had a Jeep not that long ago, and I can't figure out how to open the, uh, <laughs> how to open the hood on it. There we go. Well, that didn't sound good, did it? Oh, the battery's been knocked out of place. So is the cover off of the, uh, the relay center power distribution center. This is interesting. The alternator is turned backwards on this. That's, I don't recall mine being like that. Okay. Yeah. The alternator is backwards on this. Look at that. That's bizarre. All right. Um, I mean, everything looks good under the hood aside from being shaken up a little bit from that impact. I'm sure that whatever it hit, it hit it good and hard. Let's take a look at the interior. Oh man, oh, now that I miss. I know that this smell is probably toxic and I don't care. I used to love getting in my Jeep and smelling that fresh glue. I think that's what that smell is. It's adhesive, it's glue. 
There's a, another tire. Looks like it's brand new on a brand new wheel as well. <laughs> I think this thing's definitely hiding some damage, guys. Interior wise, it's perfect. It is perfect. Wow. And this says what? I can't even read that. Maybe you guys can read it. DSC. Oh, Oscar Mike. I thought that was a D. I don't know who Oscar Mike is, but that's okay. Let's see if we can fire it up. 1,100 miles. 1,100 miles. I wonder if this was a demo. Fires right up. Do the wheels turn straight? <laughs> How much you want to bet they don't? Okay, so this is straight. This looks relatively straight on the front wheel, the front left wheel. I'm curious to see what the front right wheel looks like. You got all the power options. I didn't have any of this in my man. I had a crappy little screen. I had manual windows. I didn't have any of these options. I wanted a really basic Jeep. That's all I wanted. I wanted a Jeep to play, not to have a bunch of fancy stuff in it. So I bought a really cheap, like $36,000 Jeep Wrangler, the four-door version. And then I lifted it and I put 35s on it. Uh, I think I put a four inch lift on it, 35s, the bumper, the winch on the front, the matching spare tire. I spent a lot of money on that Jeep and uh, I never really played with it, like never. <laughs> and then I sold it and lost a ton of money on it. But you know, that's the way it goes. So that wheel looks relatively straight, but I guarantee you this one's not, nah. Although, truthfully, it doesn't look bad. I mean, like I said, obviously, it's way off, right? This is supposed to be more over here. The wheel is, is severely off. But as far as turning left to right, it looks like they're both sitting in about the same spot. Okay, well... Maybe this one's really not that bad. But I'm telling you, the way it ripped that wheel apart, I don't know. I don't know. I would be a little concerned that there's some hidden damage on this. I like this. I like this a lot. Um, and the smell. If you got, please do me a favor. If you want to smell something absolutely wonderful, go to a new car dealer in the heat of the day and go smell one of their Jeeps. I promise you've never smelled anything like that. I don't know what kind of adhesive they're using on all of this stuff, but oh my God, it's heavenly. Now take a look at this. This is an Impala LT, and you guys know by now that I've been looking for an Impala for a while. This is not the generation I want. I love this Impala though, I do. In fact, I'm looking at an SS right now for 5,500 bucks. I think it may be a little overpriced, but it's a red with the chrome wheels. Impala SS got the 5.3 front wheel drive V8. It's basically an LTZ taken to the next level, right? LTZ was their top trim for the Impala, but Chevrolet went one step further and did the SS. So you get the fully maxed out LTZ with the performance of a front wheel drive V8, which they didn't do very well. The transmissions were notorious for grenading. Uh, too much power for those transmissions. And then right next to the Impala, we've got the new generation Malibu. And if you look at them, they're very similar in size, although they look completely different. Look at these. These are very similar in size. In fact, I think the Malibu is bigger than the previous generation Impala. I love these cars. I do. I, I, I got to bring it up again because I always do this. Um, somebody threatened to shoot me recently. Like, no joke. They threatened to shoot me because I told them that an Impala was not a luxury car. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you're free to disagree, obviously, but it's not, it's not. It's not a luxury car. I don't care if you have the top tier. And he told me, and it was weird, I'm thinking maybe I'm talking to a kid that plays too many video games or something. Um, he got on there and was telling me that basically the Impala is better than all these other cars, including the Mercedes and BMWs, and, and his family's Impala is a luxury car. And I honestly, I wasn't rude to this kid or whoever, whoever he was. I just told him, I said, listen, I love Impalas. I have always loved the Impala. I mean, always, always, I loved them all. 
but it's not a luxury car. It's a nice car. It's a really nice car. It's not luxury. I don't care if it's got leather interior and everything else. It's not a luxury car, all right? And I'm gonna tell you right now, he went off the handle on me. I mean, he went crazy on me for saying that an Impala is not a luxury car. And then he threatened to shoot me. And I said, okay, all right, man. I didn't think it was that serious, but you know, to each their own, whatever. Here's the deal, guys. I've got luxury cars at the house. I just got through selling some. Uh, a Mercedes S550, a luxury car. A BMW, I have gotten an X5 diesel, luxury car. You can say that because BMW, luxury. Mercedes, luxury. Hell, even Lincoln, if you're looking for an American automaker, Lincoln, luxury. All right, Cadillac, luxury. Unfortunately, Chevy is not something when you say, hey, what do you drive? Oh, I drive a Mercedes S550. People automatically think, oh, it's a luxurious vehicle. They also think, oh, that's a money pit. Oh, what a piece of crap. And I don't blame you <laughs> for saying that. You know, I, I've had some, so I kind of agree. But when you say, oh, I drive a Chevy Impala or a Chevy Malibu, people are like, oh, that's nice. But nobody's sitting there going, well, that's a luxurious car. You know what I mean? Nice cars. I don't want people thinking that I'm hating on them. I'm not. I love the Impala and I love the Malibu. But if I'm gonna get one, I want the bigger one. So here's what I did. I bought the last generation Chevy Impala. I did, the newest one. I didn't get it in the spec that I wanted. I wanted an LTZ or a Premier, I think is how they ended the lineup. I don't know, like in 2019 or whatever. Um, but I couldn't find one for a price I was happy with. So I found, and I think it was a good deal, I found a 2016 Chevy Impala LT with the leather interior, no sunroof, whatever. But I got it for, I think it was $5,000, maybe $6,000 tops with a clean title. So, you know, there you go. And I'm, I bought it because I'm going to do a dedicated video talking about how it's not a luxury car. <laughs> you want to talk about being petty? Yeah, I literally bought it just so I can make a video talking about how it's not a luxury car and really piss that guy off that's supposedly going to shoot me. Anyway, here's the Malibu and here's the Impala. In fact, my, my dad's girlfriend just bought one of these. She bought the LTZ. It's this generation right here. It's red. She's got the sunroof. She's got the leather interior, heated seats, heated steering wheel, all that good stuff, man. I mean, they are nice cars. And if I'm being completely honest, even though I will never say that an Impala is a luxury car, I'll never say it because it's not true. I will say this about them. I would take one of these over any of my Mercedes, Maserati, BMW any day of the week because even though it may not be as luxurious and you might not have the prestige of the name, it's not a money pit. For the cost of doing a tune-up on an S550 at the dealer, you could probably have a dealer put a transmission in one of these. <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> these things are great vehicles for what they are. They really are, and I would take something like this any day of the week over uh, like an S550 or an S63, although it's not gonna be nearly as fun. Now, this is obviously a hail damage car. It's got 89,000 miles on it. I'm not interested in that one at all. I can already hear that it's got the blend door motors going out. That's one of the big problems with GMs from this era. Blend door actuator motors, they, they make horrible noises. Uh, some of them are pretty easy to fix and some of them not so much. But this one, on the other hand, because this is a newer generation Malibu, I actually really do like these. Uh, this is a hail car as well. There's a lot of hail damage to this, but I've told you guys in the past, I'm not opposed to driving around in a hail damaged car. It's not that big of a deal to me. I love cars. I love all types of cars, damaged cars, new cars, used cars, doesn't matter. I just, I just enjoy cars. Something like this is probably going to get really, really good fuel economy. It may not look the best, but somebody already replaced the windshield. You can see the sticker residue. What's this got in it? Like a 2.5 or maybe even smaller? Just a little four cylinder cloth interior. I've got nothing against cloth interior, nothing at all, except I do have one thing against cloth interior, my dog. My pickup truck, my Ram 3500, it's cloth interior. And I hate taking my dog on trips 
because immediately, immediately after getting back from a trip, she's a short hair dog and she's got those little hairs that just get stuck in every fiber of the cloth. So for that, I would prefer leather just to make my life a little easier when it comes to vacuuming. This car, this is a new car. It's only got 1,786 miles on it. That's it. You want to talk about smelling good? This one smells the same. In fact, <laughs> in fact, this brings me back to a recent video I did where I think I was sitting in a Malibu just like this, and I said it smelled like an elephant's pin or the hippopotamus pin at the zoo. This one smells the same way. I kid you not, this one smells the same way. So this, it's got to be the, the different types of adhesive these auto manufacturers are using. This has got to be toxic. This cannot be good for you to breathe. But this car smells exactly like the other one did. It's a GM thing. They smell like manure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm assuming over time that smell goes away. This one's, this one's real strong, though. Uh, okay, so hail damage, 1,700 miles. There, there's not going to be anything wrong with this car at all. Backwards. I love that little screen, too. Forwards. Uh, auto start, stop. Obviously, the air conditioning is ice cold. Important window works. And I guarantee you the less important window works as well. Yep. You've got your OnStar up there. I really like their screens. I mean, for a basic car, this thing's got a really nice screen, at least to me, in my opinion. It's also got a full tank of gas. Of course, there's no warning lights on the dash at all. Let's pop the hood and let's pop the trunk. Is there a trunk button or do you just open it from the back? Does this have remote start? Remote start's a big deal. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's crazy to me because I'm pretty sure that the uh, the Impala that I bought does not have remote start. And <laughs> it's a, I think it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a 2016. Uh, it is an LT. I don't know if it's a one, two, three LT, but I'm almost certain it does not have remote start. And I was kind of shocked that something as new as a 2016, you know, big Impala does not have remote start. Look at this thing run. 1.5 liter Ecotec, little tiny turbocharged engine. This thing probably gets closer to 40 miles a gallon on the highway, and it really is a good looking car. I really, I really do like this one. Um, there's a lot of body work involved though, if you wanted to straighten this out. For me, I would say no, nah. I wouldn't bother fixing it. I would just drive it, enjoy it. Do these come with spare tires nowadays? They do, look at that, spare tire, license plate bracket for the front, it's got everything. Yeah, it's the same car it was before the accident, guys. Accident, it, the hail, it's the same exact car that it was before the hailstorm came and took it out. It's still gonna run and drive exactly the same. The only difference is, it's a little bit cosmetically challenged and it doesn't generally carry the manufacturer's warranty anymore. Now, speaking of Malibus, here's another one. This is an LTZ though, and it's a little bit older, but I've always loved this generation of Malibu too, mainly because of the taillights. I always thought the taillights were really, really cool on this. They look like kind of evil horns on the back. You know what I mean? I don't know. It looks kind of like the devil. Oh, wow. What in the devil happened to you? Good night. I didn't see that. Let me go to the other side. And I want to show you real quick the interior on this car. Older for sure, definitely dated, but look at this. I love this interior. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's, that's just beautiful right there. I've never seen one with this color combination on the inside. I'm not a fan of silver. I like colors that pop, but I also like black. Black's a good color. You know, I like yellow and red and, and metallic blues. Silver, eh, not so much. But this is one I would, I would drive this one. Well, not in its current condition. I would drive this one being silver just because of how gorgeous the interior is on it. I'm not gonna spend much time on this Jeep here but it folded up pretty good. It took a front end hit. That winch and that bumper just folded up right into the core sport, folded the hood right here, smashed the windshield all to pieces. Those windshields, I'm telling you, you could breathe on them wrong. 
and the windshields on these Jeeps will just shatter. I'm, and I'm dead serious. Like I, I've had it happen seemingly out of nowhere where the <laughs> you're driving down the road, doop doop doop, and suddenly you hit a light bump, windshield shatters. Yeah. Luckily, you go back to the uh, you go back to the dealer, and I've had no issue having them replace it for free. But you can see what happened here is in the rack it broke these clips that hold the hood down, and I guess somehow the hood came up and it flew into the uh, the windshield here, or. Maybe somebody forgot to put the hood down all the way, and that's what caused the wreck. Maybe the hood blocked the windshield while they were going down the road, and they crashed. Now that, that makes a little bit more sense to me. I think I'm gonna close out the video with this Buick. I, I don't know why I like Buicks. I guess it's a sign that I'm getting old. Either that, or Buick has really stepped their game up. Now this is not a new Buick, but in my opinion, it's a very sharp, looking car this is a 2018 buick lacrosse i think it's absolutely beautiful it does have hail damage again who cares i don't care about the hail damage in fact if you look at it at just the right angles you don't even that's not true you see the hail damage from every angle uh it's got quite a bit of it it's really bad but it's got a set of firestone destination le3s uh not no it <laughs> That doesn't matter. I don't I don't care so much about hail damage. Now, there is a point where it's like, maybe I wouldn't want to drive it. You know, if it's got major craters in it, like somebody beat it with baseballs, eh, you know, yeah, I'd probably want to find something with a little less damage. This has got kind of moderate uh, sized hail dings. I would call them maybe ping pong ball sized. I mean, it's it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely got some pretty considerable hail damage. With that said, it's not so bad that I would not want to drive this car. Um, oh, it smells good. That's a rarity. This actually smells good inside. Nice leather seats. It's a brisk 180 degrees inside of this car. This thing looks like it was well cared for. Look how nice the seat is. Even the bolster is not ripped apart. It's actually a really nice car. What do you think the miles are on this one? Uh, let's guess. Let's guess from what you've seen the mileage. I'm going to say 84,000. That's my guess, 84,000 miles on this one. Oh boy, it's hot. Good Lord. These 104 degree days are just awful. Oh wow, I was way off. What did you guys guess? Oh, my head. Um, The seat. <laughs> Where's the... The seat went up on me, and I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to, there we go. As soon as I turned the car on, it put my head into the ceiling. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good at all. There we go. It's only got 49,000 miles. I was way off, I guess because of how dirty it is. I mean, it's a it's a clean car overall, but it's uh it's definitely in need of a good detail on the inside i like this what engine does this have is it a v6 or did they cram another four banger under the hood of course cold air conditioning at 49,000 miles everything better work but then again it's a gm and they're kind of notoriously junk i'm kidding not exactly but i am kidding if you guys remember, I had a 2019 Chevy Corvette. I bought it brand new off the showroom floor. It was red. It was just a base model Stingray. It was a uh, manual, that's right. It was a seven speed manual transmission. And uh, well, you know, that car did not do me any favors. I bought it literally off of the showroom floor up in uh, Edmond, Oklahoma from I don't remember the name of the place, Bob Moore, or I think it's Bob Moore Chevrolet, something like that. I can't remember for sure, don't, don't hold me to that. But anyway, you know, I spent my 50 some thousand dollars, $55,000 on the car. Obviously this is pre-inflation. <laughs> this was pre-Bidenomics administration here. Um, got it for what I felt was a really good price and uh, well, you know, it was Christmas time. That was another thing. It was right around Christmas. I took my fiance to the mall 
and I bought her a really fat diamond ring for Christmas, uh, an engagement ring for Christmas. And then as a present to myself, I went and I bought a brand new Corvette for Christmas, right? I mean, it makes sense. She's happy, I'm happy. And then like 150 miles later, 150 miles, I think, on the dash of that car when it broke down. It left me on the side of the road stranded. And then the car was gone for something like, it was just over a month, which makes it applicable for the Lemon Law buyback. So my good friend Eli, who is an attorney, decided to send some paperwork over to the dealership and to General Motors corporate telling them of our intent to uh, file Lemon Law on the car, at which point, uh, the dealership screwed me. They did not care about my problems. Um, they did not care that my car was not right even after getting it back from them. Nothing was ever right on that car again. Uh, GM said, we'll give you $10,000 to drop this. And I said, done. I can, I can forget all about it for $10,000, right? Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? They wrote me a check for ten grand, and I forgot all about the problems. And then, you know, I drove the car a while longer than eventually traded it in on a Jeep. And now here we are today looking at a Buick. So it's not that GMs are junk. I don't want anybody to get mad at me for saying it. it's just my experience. You got, you got to understand that Corvette was my dream car. And I know it's nothing crazy. It wasn't a Z06, right? It wasn't a ZR1. This is a base model Stingray. As a kid, I can remember playing with the Hot Wheels of the C3 Corvette, you know, and and I always dreamt of having one and coming from where I came from, it never, I never thought in a million years I'd be able to have one. So this was my dream car and I finally acquired it and it felt so good. And then to have the car 150 miles later blow up, the fuel pump melted inside the fuel tank. That's what happened to it. And it took forever to get the parts. Heck, maybe that was during during the vid. I, I don't remember for sure. It was 2019 or 2020. Yes, it was. There must have been su supply chain shortages or something. They could not get the parts. And then when they did, they put it all back together. My back end was crooked. The, the back fascia of the car was not right. It wasn't straight anymore. It was crooked. There were massive gaps. It was, it was a really horrible experience. But then again, you know, uh, it's definitely not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. So anyway, back to the Buick. It's not that I hate GM, it's just I kind of swore off ever buying a new, I'll make this very clear, new General Motors car ever again. I said never. The way they treated me after like purchasing my dream car from them, uh, yeah, I was really disappointed in, in the way that was handled from the dealership all the way up to uh, corporate at General Motors. But regardless, that doesn't mean that they're all junk. It doesn't mean all Corvettes are junk. I just got a bad one and it just left a really sour taste in my mouth. So used, absolutely. Would I buy this Buick? Depending on the price and a heartbeat. I, I don't know what these things go for, but I mean, the AC is great. You even have air conditioned seats, which I guess Buick is considered a luxury brand. You guys will have to comment below and tell me your opinion on that. I, I don't know that I consider Buick luxury but I guess it probably is. It's got nice fake wood grain. It does have the nice ventilated leather seats. The colors are right. I mean, it is a good looking car. Um, definitely has some luxurious qualities and features. Very nice pleather, um, plastic leather interior. It's got the V6. Oh, hell no, it's gonna try to crush me again. I don't like that. Lots of hail damage, but again, it's got the V6, man. Um, probably direct injection. What is it? A 3.6 liter? It doesn't say yes. 3.6 liter. I'm sure by 2018, this was all direct injection. So it's a good motor. It's a stout motor, torquey. It'll definitely move when you want it to. I still think the car looks really, really good. And I, I like the chrome accents, the chrome and the headlights. The I mean, it, look, I don't know. Some people are going to say it is a luxury car. Some people are going to say it's not. I'm not here to argue with you. To me, it just overall, looking at the car and sitting on the interior, it feels like a luxury car. It does. It feels like a luxury car, regardless of what people think. Uh, yeah, I would go ahead and classify this as luxury. There you go. A Buick LaCrosse is a luxury car, in my opinion. Now, drop those comments below 
and troll away. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of here, but stay tuned. I've decided I'm doing a test run for this entire week, uh, Tuesday through Friday. I'm doing two videos a day, which means my workload just went through the roof. Um, but I just wanna see how two videos a day do. If, if they do well, I'll continue them. And if they don't perform all that well, then there's no point in continuing. We'll go back to one uh, video a day. But I just wanna try it out. So my, my idea is, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe 9 o'clock in the morning, I will release my first video. And then probably around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'll release my second video. This is all uh, uh, central time, by the way. So just stay tuned. There may be some schedule changes just temporarily to see how things work. If it doesn't work out, we'll go right back to one video a day at 10 a.m. And if it does work out, then we'll probably keep the schedule of 9 a.m. for video one, 4 p.m. for video two central time. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.